Okay, today's video will be on inoculating natural logs with shiitake spawn. So, a few things you need to have are a hot plate and a double boiler. Inside the double boiler I have paraffin wax. Some people use cheese wax and get higher temperatures but I just use paraffin wax. You want to drill with about 7 16 or half inch bit and uh, of course you want a log and you want your inoculating tool which looks like this it's used to put the spawn inside the log and you also want the spawn this is shiitake spawn it's basically sawdust with the uh, shiitake spores in it and uh, what you do is you drill a hole and uh, fill it up with sawdust and then cap it off with wax to keep the moisture content up. You don't want it to dry out. So I'm going to put the camera down here. And make a couple of holes here. You only want to go about an inch down. Pull the tool up with the spawn, put it in the hole, and inject it into the hole. I like to clean the hole off so I get good seal wax on it. And just cover all the holes up with wax. Now, for the holes, a log like this, I'd probably make six rows of holes, each hole about six or maybe even eight inches apart, just depending on how motivated I am. I think the general rule of thumb is the uh, inches uh, of diameter the log has is the number of rows you should have. And then when you do the rows, you want to stagger them, so every, every row the hole is in between the other two holes from the row beside it. So that's a fully inoculated log here. Now I gotta take it take it back to the little garden back here. Now these are the logs I haven't done yet trees that were cut down about two weeks ago or so. Mostly chestnut oak. There's some white oak in there. I've had better luck with the white oak than chestnut oak. I think the bark's too thick, but they'll, they'll all produce mushrooms. Here are the logs I just inoculated the past week or two. Keep them lying down on the ground for probably close to a year. That way they get all the humidity coming up from the ground. There's some more there. And there's some I did uh, a while back. And here's my batch that's fruiting right now. I picked most of them, but there's still some on here. There's a little guy there. This one here is actually about ripe, even though it's pretty small. You can tell they're ripe when um, the edge of the mushroom is just slightly curled under. That's when I like to pick them. This one has ways to go. This one will probably get close to the size of an English muffin when that one's done. And uh, here's some got overripe. I just had them sitting in a pile. Here's where they start.